Since we have, uh, let, me go. let me point out to you that if you think about it philosophically, the table should be quite amazing that there is a table like this because anybody bothered looking in the back of the book for the binomial table? There is a, remember I told you to do some binomial homework calculator the last time or today, whenever they were due? Now, instead of plugging it into the combination formula, multiplying it 0.5 to the third power, all you got to do is go to the table, look up the proper n, the proper p, the proper x, and what they all meet is the answer to the question. There are tables like that. So that table took how many pages? For those of you who may have looked at it, about six or eight or ten pages, because there are many n's, many p's, many x's, and there are a lot of combinations. But what about this thing here? How many combinations of, remember, what's the, what's the key numbers here? The mu changes from example to example, the sigma changes from example to example, and the x changes from example to example. So how many combinations of, of mu and sigma and x's are there? There's an infinite number. There's no limit. It's like x can be 5,000. I mean, mu can be 5,000. Mu can be 50,000. So how do you get, the book happens to give you two pages, but most books give you one page. How can you get it down to one page? And the answer is, and again, I'm able to tell you this now, and I'll probably tell it to you again probably a little more quickly on Monday, on Friday, is that you standardize the problem. In other words, the table works for a particular mu. Mu equals zero, it turns out to be. And mu equals to one, a sigma equals to one. It gives you the answer for that particular combination of mu and sigma. And then the x's could be anything. So your job, or our job, on, on Friday will be to figure out how to convert this problem to a problem where the average is truly zero and the sigma is equal to one. But the truth is I was going to leave this go until Friday, but I realize now that since we learned this already, and we do have two minutes, which for me is a lot of time, you might be able to answer that question, because we already had a formula. Not, mostly, most years I don't teach that formula in this part of chapter three, but the online stuff did teach it, so some of you theoretically, well, everybody should know the answer to the question. What formula do we already have that will in fact take the data and convert it or transform it to a new set of numbers where now the average is truly zero and the sigma is truly one. Anybody recall know what I'm alluding to? I mean, it, it's in between. You should be able to do it, but it's still challenging. What am I alluding to? What I'm alluding to is the Z formula. Remember the Z formula that said an x minus, I think it was my x minus x bar over s. This was on the online. Was it, on, was it part of the test? Was this something involving this formula? Yeah, it was, you know, I make a big deal about it in class, but for the online, you probably show, showed that to yourself, or did it briefly in class. In this case, we're going to use the formula x minus mu over sigma, because we're not talking about the sample, we're talking about the whole population. And this formula, which is the only, it's a simple formula, we've seen it sort of before, is the only formula you need to know in chapter six, which is why it's not a big deal. And this formula basically does for you what, I, what we need to be done, is to convert your x to a new set of data that has an average of zero, because if you subtract mu from every, let's say the original average is 140, and you subtract 140 from everybody, the new average will turn out to be zero. And if you divide everybody by sigma, the old sigma was 15, divide everybody by 15, so now the new data has a standard deviation of one. So we end up with a, a what's called a standard normal distribution, which is the same basic shape, but has a zero over here and a one for the standard deviation. And that's, and I'm sorry, we're getting, now we're getting a little bit, we're gonna go, we're gonna start off with this thing on Friday, finish up the chapter, practice a couple of problems, and then Wednesday's okay. So